blessed. Got to sit home from school one day with a shiner on my eye. Fighting was against the rules, it didn't matter why. When Dad got home, I told that story just like I'd rehearsed. Then stood there on those trembling knees and waited for the worst. He said, let me tell you a secret about your father's love. The secret that my daddy said was just between us. He said, daddy, don't just love their children every now and then. It's a club without end. When I became a father in the spring of 81, there was no doubt that stubborn boy was just like my father's son. When I thought my patience had been tested to the end, I took my daddy's secret and I passed it on to him. I said, let me tell you a secret about your father's love. The secret that my daddy said was just between us. I said, daddy, don't just love their children every now and then. things a little bit today. Uh, first, I have a couple of announcements here. Um, I want to remind you to get a handout if you don't have a handout because it has all of the words to our purpose statement, all the affirmations we're going to be saying, and the songs that we're going to be singing. So keep your handout handy. Haha, <laughs> that's cute. Handout handy. Um, let's see. I want to recognize everyone who came to early meditation this morning. We have um, an early meditation every third Sunday, and we have group silence, and that is such a powerful thing. And uh, in the world today, I can't think of anything more powerful than group silence, uh, sitting in, the, in that uh, presence within in a group raising the vibration within that room. And I hope you can all feel that this morning. We had early meditation every third Sunday that starts at 9.45 and goes to 10.15. And of course, everyone is invited to come to that. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, Roy. Thank you, Roy, for your early music this morning. Hi, it's so fun. 
So, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of talent here. Thank you so much, Roy Martin. Uh, let's see. So we are filming this, and it goes on to YouTube. If you want to receive the YouTubes directly to your email, there is an email list behind the sign. Print your name on there, and after I upload those, we'll send everything directly to you on your email. Wednesday night services, we have started doing in person. Those happen Wednesday night at 7 p.m. This Wednesday will be our first back in person drumming circle. Woohoo! So uh, we will have that. Tom will be back with us. I, I texted him, he will be back with us. We're doing the drumming circle outside here. And Tom comes down and he gives us like a little drumming lesson. It's real fun. Uh, and he's, he does that at six. And then we go from seven to eight, the regular service where we just kind of have a free for all and, and do uh, pretty much what we want to do. So come at six if you'd like a lesson. And we usually throw him a, a couple bucks and a love offering for doing that. He just lives down the street here and, I, and he's still here with us. So that's this Wednesday evening. Um, also check the bulletin board on the uh, inside the building. And if you want to go in th inside the building to the restrooms or anything, we would love for you to go into that door over there. Uh, we just got everything up here in the way. So if you'd like to go into the building, go that way. But there's a bulletin board by the bathrooms that shows all of the events that are happening. Also our events are on our website and the website address is on your handout. You can visit that and get all the information so you don't have to remember it all. Um, we have a potluck, our, our annual Father's Day potluck, which we used to do service in there and come out for potluck, but now we're doing it all out here. So that happens after the service today. We invite everyone to stay for the potluck. Um, Where'd my trusty day go? <laughs> I just wanted to be sure I got everything, but if I didn't, I'll, I'll get it Welcome later. <laughs> so we're going to just move on here. Um, so I invite you to breathe. We're going to state our purpose statement. So get your hand out ready to state our pur purpose statement. But first, I'd just like you to, to breathe with me and relax. Just breathe a mindful breath here in this beautiful day outside this morning and feel the presence of love expand within you as you breathe. Feel that presence of love warming your body with a tingling, glowing light. Can you feel that? We join together this morning as Center for Spiritual Life and we merge our lights as one light. We expand our love as one love. And we focus our joy and peace upon the world as we speak our purpose statement together from this space of perfect harmony this morning. So here we go. As an intentional spiritual community, the purpose of CSL is to be a living environment for individuals to realize that we are all unique emanations of God, the love intelligence governing the universe. We embody the truth of our oneness with God, and we consciously practice this truth in our everyday life through the exploration of new thought, ageless wisdom, and the energy of unconditioned love, we are dedicated to individual transformation and to being a beneficial presence in the world.
What a wonderful moment it is to feel this beautiful, fresh summer air. To sit under this beautiful tree and to feel that presence of the divine permeating everything. And I invite you in this silence to go within even deeper to that place where you feel, and I feel, that union with the divine, that deepening of unconditioned love, that joy and that peace, and the very essence of our life. For there is only the one, the one substance of all things, spirit, manifesting in form, spirit, the being the unique emanations of diversity as all forms of creation. And that same energy, that same creativity flows in and through as each one of us. And it's from this place of union that I declare that we are open and receptive to knowing a greater truth of ourselves. That I declare that we are receptive and that we go within and deeply listen to that still small voice of divine wisdom that guides us through this eternal life with words that guide us to our greatest and highest good. I declare that we are very aware of who we are and all those attributes of God, those attributes of joy, of peace, of harmony, of goodness are ours. And we open to express all of those attributes in our life as we are blessed by the divine we bless others for they too are divine and today we are blessed by the volunteers and the staff who give us a pathway of openness 
to receive that love and make this service possible. So I give thanks for this service, knowing that it is in the best interest of all concern and very, very loving. And I turn my attention to the prayer chest, knowing that each and every request is already active in the mind of God, that those attributes of wholeness, of perfection, of peace, of joy, of health, abundance, is active right in that situation, that a healing is taking place. And each request is enfolded in divine love and is coming to fruition for the best of all concerned. So I give thanks for this day, for this truth of knowing exactly who we are. I give thanks that we are open and receptive to being the vessel of love in this earthly life. So I release these words into the law, knowing it is already so. It is already done, as I have said. And we just join together and declare, and so it is. I'd like to remind you that the prayer chest is behind the sign on uh, just behind you so if you have any desires or constrictions in your life please leave your worries with us just put your prayer requests in the box they're kept confidential and uh, the practitioners will do affirmative prayer on your behalf this week so, my quote from William Shakespeare, it's a wise father that knows his own child. And from Steve Martin, a father carries pictures where his money used to be. <laughs> <laughs> and from Billy Graham, a good father is one of the most unsung 
unpraised, unnoticed, and yet one of the most valuable assets in our society. about the Divine Feminine on Mother's Day, and here we are on Father's Day, and we will be talking about the Divine Masculine. 
okay? So have you ever heard of the king, the warrior, the magician, and the lover archetypes? Yep. Yeah? Raise your hand if you have. Lots of you. Mm -hmm. Well, these are the four a union by Carl Jung archetypes that represent the four major components of what makes up any healthy, fully individuated, mature, masculine essence. Ooh, that's what we're looking at today. <laughs> fully individuated, mature, masculine essence, right? So I have some information here from the work of Jordan Gray. And uh, he says, a mature masculine essence is, ba is balanced in these archetypes and that we can become more well-rounded by recognizing our weak points and increasing our energy in those areas. Therefore, integrating these four archetypes and striving to express the divine masculine, whole, healthy, masculine energy. Doesn't that sound fabulous? Right? I'm gonna get this out of the sun just a bit. There, now I can see a little better. Is that okay, Dave? Yeah. Doing all right? All right. Okay, so as with the feminine energy, we all experience masculine energy as well. We're not just talking about men and women here. We're talking about masculine, feminine energy, like the yin and yang. And we talked about that uh, quite a bit uh, at the feminine uh, on Mother's Day. A healthy balance between masculine and feminine energy will result in a more grounded, passionate, compassionate life. Okay, one energy is supporting the other, each necessary in their own way for the whole, okay? So today we will focus on the masculine in honor of the father. So from Jordan Gray, here is a breakdown of the four union archetypes with practical tips, we love that, right? On more deeply integrating your yet to be integrated parts. So if you have something, if there's no handout today. So if there's something you want to remember, you're going to have to write it down. I do have notebooks back there. So if you brought your journal or anything, if you're interested in this kind of uh, spiritual work, which I am, of course, here we are. So he first talks about the king energy, okay? Since a king in the traditional sense is a well-rounded, deeply trustable man, King energy is what you earn as a result of having integrated the magician, the lover, and the warrior archetypes. King energy is grounded, disciplined, firm, decisive, protective, responsive, present, and centered. So here are some tips to increase your king energy in a healthy way. Know what makes you come alive and do that every single day of your life. Know yourself. Do what brings you joy. Guard against shiny objects and distractions. Live your life potently and do what you know is right for you. When you plan your life out and allow yourself the freedom of living out that plan, you give your life meaning. In other words, build your dream and the dream will build you. Isn't that lovely? And that sounds a lot like our, our topic for June, which is visualization, right? Build your dream and your dream will build you. So next to increase your king energy, Live by your own internal code. Live your life according to your personal values and ideals, not the values of your parents, society, peer group, or colleagues. Make sure you live your life so that you can die well and be proud of who you were during your journey. Do your best every day to ensure that you are leaving the world a better place than when you found it. Your legacy matters. Live every day as if you were under a microscope. Give authentic praise to others. Acknowledge people's efforts. Give anyone the time of day if they are a part of your kingdom. Give anyone the time of day 
if they're in your awareness, if they're a part of your kingdom. He says, live with more integrity than you currently do. Where in your life are you out of alignment? What do you do that you are even 1% ashamed of? Who have you not apologized to for past wrongdoings where doing so would not bring them unnecessary harm? When do you let yourself get away with withholding your truth? He says, clean up your life by cleaning up your integrity. Allow your thoughts, beliefs, and actions to be in total alignment. Be so yourself that everyone can safely expect what version they're going to get in all moments. I love that. Allow yourself to become so consistent and predictable that you also, as a, re as a result, become deeply trustable. The last thing he says about the king energy is take full responsibility for everything in your life, the good and the bad. Let go of blaming others entirely. Face directly into your lessons. Realize that no one is coming to save you. Boy, that was a big realization for me. I always thought someone was going to just come knock on my door and tell me, you know, what to do, the truth, and how to save me. It's not happened yet. <laughs> Everything in your life is a direct result of your mind. If your life needs cleaning up, then so do your thoughts. All right, what is warrior energy? Warrior energy overlaps with king energy in terms of its propensity for justice, fairness, peace, and order. But it also has a junkyard dog quality to it. Warrior energy will tear you up and throw you out if you stand in its way. But its aggression is never mindless. Warrior aggression is tied to a higher cause or virtue. It has reason and mindfulness embedded in it. Warrior energy lives with a sense of forward gear, ever forward. The warrior picks a path and leans into it with all of his effort, energy, and life force. A warrior has a potent sense of totality. To cultivate and deepen your sense of warrior energy, you must be decisive. Pick your path and honor it. Know what you want and state it. Be clear in what you want. Don't waste your precious time hemming and hawing. Get off the fence, make a decision, commit fully, and redirect yourself as needed. Next, he says, be assertive. State your desires and needs clearly. Be forthcoming and direct in your communication. Work on becoming more comfortable saying no to people and hearing no from people. Next, he says, challenge yourself. Warrior energy grows through challenges. Exercise regularly. Use your body. Do more with your body. You build confidence, confidence by accomplishing tasks. And then he says the last thing, work on your sense of discipline. Give your gifts ferociously every day. That's cool, huh? Let nothing stand in your way. You know what, you know what your work is. Don't let any external forces slow you down. And next we go on to what is magician energy. A common misconception is that magician archetype is all about performance and showmanship. More accurately, he says, magician energy is about mastery, dedication to a craft, or one or multiple sets of hidden knowledge. 
He says, the doctor utilizes her magician energy when she plays healer to her patients. The painter deploys the magician energy when he gets lost in a creative flow and a blank canvas turns into a work of art in front of his very eyes. The therapist employs his magician when he sees through the words and hears and diagnoses what is truly going on behind the patient's myriad of words. So to increase your relationship to your magician energy, you must dedicate yourself to a craft or primary mission in your life. He says, become a master at something. Stop trying to be a jack of all trades and become a king of one. Once you have a sufficient level of mastery in one area, then you may move on to the next. Don't be a dabbler, be a master. Allow yourself to become masterful at something with time, effort, and patience. He says, create more. No one becomes a master at their skill overnight. In order to become increasingly sufficient and eventually masterful at something, you must make a lot of mistakes and continually learn from your efforts. Fail fast, fail often, fail forwards. Get 0.1% better every day at your craft and your life will be unrecognizably different a year from now. That's baby steps. Isn't that incredible? 0.1% better every day at your craft and your life will be unrecognizable in a year. He says, consciously cut out noise from your life. It's impossible to become a master at something if you are constantly spreading your energy around everywhere. If watching the evening news doesn't serve you on your path, then stop it. If hanging out with certain negative social influences hinders your growth in life, then cut them out. If you are trying to run 10 businesses at once and none of them are doing particularly well, then you're allowing yourself to drown in noise. Cut out noise. Be fierce with your boundaries to create space for what truly matters to you. He says, understand that certain lessons must come once you have truly earned them. Like any wise guru, magician energy knows that getting all of the information you need up front would stunt you or damage your trajectory. Certain lessons need to be taken in over time. Don't rush your process. Don't force someone's hand when they tell you that you aren't ready to know about certain things. Everything will come to you in time if it is meant to. No need to force it. He says, find a mentor and listen well. Magician energy is largely built through apprenticeship, teachers, and mentors. You do not have all the answers, believe it or not. There will be people along your path who will help you exponentially skyrocket your abilities if you allow them to. Humble yourself and sideline your ego for long enough to be a good student. Make yourself valuable. Show your appreciation to your teacher by doing your work and making your life count and by being efficient with how much of your teacher's energy you consume. Do your homework. Be as self-sufficient as possible and lighten your, mental, your mentor's proverbial load whenever possible. <clears throat> Next, what is lover energy? Lover energy is the energy of excitement passion, emotion, sensuality, and youthful 
idealism. Sounds like fun, huh? <laughs> the passionate protester screaming about his cause. The apprenticing chef hastily tasting his slow cooked sauce. The person consumed by their creative endeavors who occasionally forgets to eat, rest, or prioritize their social life. All of these people are steeped in their love energy. Can anyone relate to that? Yeah. Right? So to increase your lover energy, you must, he says, slow down and see the beauty in simple things instead of consuming more. The shadow side of the lover energy ties closely to addiction. Instead of endlessly chasing highs in your life, like sex or food or drugs, consciously slow down and see the beauty of all that is already around you and inside of you. We're not learning anything new, are we? Regularly spend time in nature and let the beauty and expansiveness of it all wash over you. You can do that right now. Never allow your life to become so full that you neglect the elements. We are a part of nature, and if you pretend otherwise, then your, your soul will slowly and progressively suffer. Breathe in Mother Nature. Allow yourself to be in stillness. Regardless of whether you are in, in the forest or in the middle of a downtown core filled with modern architecture, marvel in the daily beauty that is always around you. <clears throat> Next he says, do a 20 minute slow eating meditation where you focus all of your attention on the meal in front of you. To drop into your body and the world of the senses Enjoy at least one mindful meal per week where you give all of your attention to the task at hand. Feel the texture, taste the nuance. Enjoy the sense of nourishment that the meal affords you. Give it all of your available attention. Dive into it fully. Lover energy is not about mindless consumption consumption of food, alcohol, or whatever, but rather a present, mindful reveling in the beauty and richness of all that life has to offer. While lover energy desires to be boundless and totally free, the other three archetypes form the structure around the lover so that it doesn't take control and turn your life into chaos. So these four archetypes work in tandem with each other. As you develop one, the others beg to be boosted as well. If you find yourself highly cultivated in three with one deficiency remaining, that gap will make itself known in short order. It will make itself known in short order by the way of feedback you get from how your life is functioning or under functioning, right? So right now I have, we have a special song with for you and then we're gonna come back right after this song and we're going to do a very short meditation that has to do with this slow eating meditation here, okay? So enjoy this song while I get set up for the meditation.
A gift they're going to start passing out to you don't just take the cup and don't don't touch anything inside yet okay so they're gonna pass you a, a little gift here and we're going to do a, a very short one minute eating meditation here and let me tell you while they're passing out how I came up with this um, sometimes I buy this chocolate and uh you know yeah and we have it for for dessert and one time i opened this up well we opened it up to eat it and um i read in here something really fun in the cover of the chocolate and it talks about how to discover excellence with all your senses right here in this chocolate and now i passed out um you also are getting a strawberry because i know some of you maybe can't eat chocolate or, or don't want to so I thought chocolate or strawberry, and if that's not good, then sorry. Um, I don't know. Yeah, eat both. But, but what I want you to do, I, I, we want to do this mindfully. So when everybody gets um, a piece, I want you to be still and be present. And be present with what you are about to eat. And I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, ideas of how to be present, like they gave us in this cover of the chocolate. How mind-blowing, I thought. And I thought I had to read books and stuff to become enlightened. Just chocolate. It was the dang chocolate box. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got my own here for strawberries. So uh, as soon as we're all ready, we'll start this. Did you guys get one? OK. Do we have enough? Yes. OK. If we don't, then you could take Dave's. <laughs> Did you get one? Okay, I, I don't necessarily need one. But... Okay, Does, is, if you don't have one, please raise your hand. Did, okay, and we're gonna wait till our ushers can sit down and be present as well. So thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. I think we're good to go. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Let's breathe. Let's be present right here. So with the chocolate, your sense of sight, look at the warm brown color of the chocolate. Really focus in on that. If you're eating a strawberry, look at that beautiful red color. Really be present with it. Isn't that gorgeous? Take that chocolate. Touch that smooth and silky surface. Or touch the firm but soft and fleshy strawberry. Really be present with it. With sand, now break a piece. Break a piece of chocolate and here, 
the crisp snap. Listen to the juiciness of the strawberry when you bite into it. Smell the chocolate. Sweet notes of vanilla. Smell the strawberry, the fresh fragrance in your hands. Taste the underlying notes of lush berries and combined with hints of cocoa in the chocolate. Really taste that. Enjoy the sweetness or the tartness of that strawberry. I just invite you to continue that mindfully. To focus your attention on your food. Don't forget to be grateful how this food came about. All the people involved in creating this food, not to mention the earth and the sun. And I just want to end with a, a small prayer that I wrote one time for my children to use at dinner time. Earth who gives to us this food, sun who makes it warm and good. Dear sun, dear earth, in God we live. Our loving thanks to you we give. Amen. participate in the law of circulation as a conscious spiritual practice where we acknowledge the source of all of our good and create an opening for more good to come in. Amen. So if you'll take your gift in your hand and just know with me 
that from the sufficiency of the all-giving universe, I share my givingness, knowing that as I give, I receive, and this unending, unlimited flow for the betterment of the earth. And our affirmation is, my supply is unlimited because God is unlimited and God is my supply. I have a vision dancing through my bones. I feel the passion burning in my heart. I know it's resting in my soul. Use me, use me, spirit. Use me, use me, use me, spirit. Use me. I have a vision dancing through my bones. I feel the passion burning in my heart. I know the truth. In my soul, use me, use me, spirit, use me, use me, use me, spirit, use me. I have a vision dancing through my bones. I feel the passion burning in my heart. I know the truth resting in my soul. these gifts of spirit with great gratitude knowing they go forth continuing to bless the church ourselves our community and our world for a greater and more harmonious and peaceful place and so it is Do I have chocolate in my teeth? <laughs> it's all in my hand. That's all right. It was good. Yep. All right. Turn the page. Where are we here? Okay, so I would like to welcome anyone who is here for the first time. Uh, if it's your first time at CSL, welcome. We have a potluck lunch. Um, if you have questions about this center, you can probably ask most people here, but Tamara will be walking around and you can uh, grab her and ask her any questions that you might have. She also is able to take your uh, debit or credit card for a tithe or anything else that you would like to pay for. Speaking of that, where's Ellen Hutto? <laughs> we went to Ellen Hutto's house last night for a dinner for eight fundraiser, had a fabulous meal, and uh, just had a great time being with everybody. So we'll have more of those dinner for eights coming up. And I encourage you to get up there and sign up for those because they're just a lot of fun to be. So thank you, Ellen, for doing that. Yeah. Um, I, I also want to, in honor of Father's Day, uh, lovely Karen Floyd put together some gifts for us. So uh, the little boxes down on the table are for the dads, the men. And she got a, uh, boy, this is beautiful, desert, Desiderata, oh, and did I say Desiderata. it right? You said it right. Thank you. <laughs> and there, there's one for everybody, I believe, down on the table here. So everyone can take a hand out of this, and special for dads or, or uh, men can take a little box there. So Karen, thank you so much for taking the time to put those together. Something special, a gift to take away. Mm -hmm. Stick for our hot lunch. Um, also, uh, I want to talk just a bit about the, the prayer chest. I know that, that Lou mentioned it, 
Uh, I want to mention it again. If you have a challenge in your life, anything, however small or large it is, or maybe uh, a new adventure that you are going to set upon, no matter how big or small, and you would like some extra spiritual work this week, put your name in the prayer chest and ask for the good that you desire. All of those are kept confidential, and our dear Lou Kunzelman, who is a licensed practitioner in science of mind, will take those home, and she will pray on your behalf for the whole week. So uh, thank you so much, Lou, for your uh, generous volunteer work here. All right, I, I would like to just say just a tiny bit about the summer solstice, if that's okay with you. Today is the summer solstice. Uh, anybody who follows seasons, it's a, a very special time. The summer solstice is a time to reflect on our personal growth and the meaning of the season of light and growth. This is the moment of our year when there is the most light available to us. In terms of consciousness, it is when we are the most present to ourselves and who we know ourselves to be. The sun represents the light of all life and consciousness. Seeds are planted in the earth as well as the seeds of our souls. It's a time of renewal and abundance, a time of love and expansion. As the summer sun unfolds the leaves on the trees, so do our souls open to receive the light of source to illuminate that which is within each one of us. The earth constantly provides for all of us with her incredible bounty and the sun's warmth provides the light necessary for all living beings to thrive and prosper. The solstice signifies the time when the earth is at the fullness of her strength, fertility, and abundance. So we too can celebrate our strength in joining together, pollinating our spiritual consciousness through sharing and offering gratitude for the abundance which we experience every single day. Let's just take a quiet moment here to recognize the changing of seasons and honor that light within us and without. Thank you, son. So now you'll need your hand out again. We're gonna claim our good together. So we'll just read these things and in, in our month of uh, visualization, all of these affirmations start with, I see myself, okay? So we get to claim a new way of seeing ourselves. And when we can see it, then we'll believe. When we can believe it, then we'll see it. Okay? All right, here we go. All the way down. I see myself energetic, inspired, and enthusiastic. I see myself poised, confident, and filled with the power of absolute faith. I see myself as whole and complete, with an all-sufficiency of all things. I see myself joyous, happy, and delighted to be me. I see myself enjoying the goodwill of God every single day. I see myself as the light of the world. I see myself as God being me. And so it is. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be.
Thank you. 